Welcome to the Gospel Tribune Atlanta, GTA TV. We're down at Georgia State University here at the Alonzo Crim Center. Our special guest today is Dr. Brian A. Williams. God bless you, sir. How are you? I'm oh, doing good, doing good. We also have my colleague with the Gospel Tribune Atlanta, Dr. Candace Campbell. Welcome, Dr. Candace. Thank you. We're here with Dr. Williams, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Crim Center. Man, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for being here. It is a pleasure. Tell us a little bit about Alonzo A. Crim and the Crim Center. Well, uh, Dr. Krim was the first black superintendent of the Atlanta public school system after desegregation, after the Brown decision. Mm -hmm. um, and he was a phenomenal educator, phenomenal leader, and left quite a legacy of excellence in public schooling and urban schooling here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And so uh, after he left the school system, he did, he had a, um, a position here at Georgia State. Okay. He was the Benjamin Mays chair here at Georgia State mm -hmm. and, and started that legacy of Benjamin Mays chairs. And the Benjamin Mays chairs after Dr. Krim was Lisa Delpit, and Lisa Delpit actually started the Krim Center in his name. We were founded in 1996, and since that time, we've been serving schools and local communities mm -hmm. uh, and helping them to develop uh, solutions for excellence in urban schools. Dr. Williams, tell us a little bit about what you do here and how long you've been in your position. So I'm just finishing a year as the director. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I'm just finishing a year as the director of the Crim Center, and it's a wonderful position. I, I am a scholar, so I, I, you know, I do research on urban schools. I'm a science educator, so I'm really interested in science and mathematics in urban schools. But the, what the Crim Center allows me to do is on a daily basis is to interact with our community, to interact with other people that are really passionate about excellence in urban schools, and to help to uh, develop solutions for others that are facing some challenges and helping our children to, to achieve excellence in, in education. Wonderful. What would you say motivates you? You just talked about passion. What are you most passionate about? Um, you know, I, I think that I would say that my passion comes from a, a, a deeply rooted belief that in each of our children uh, there's genius. Mm. And that it's our job as teachers and educators and as people who are invested in education to help our children realize their genius. Mm. And so one of the pillars of our community here in the center is Dr. Asa Hilliard. And one of the things that Dr. Hilliard believed is that we have the solutions. We understand how to create good schools and good educational opportunities for children. Is do we have the will to actually carry out those solutions? And so that's really what's driving our work here is that will to actually implement what we know works for children in urban schools. Is the program working, the Crim Center's program? Oh yeah, I think I. You know, I mentioned awesome. to somebody yesterday. Uh, they asked, "How's the center doing?" And I said, "We're doing great, good work. We're doing great work, and we really, really are." Um, we have a number of programs that are running out of the center. We have a couple of AmeriCorps programs that mm -hmm. are serving pre-K pre -K schools. We have another AmeriCorps program that's serving middle and high schools mm -hmm. and STEM education. We're working with the Atlanta Housing Authority, trying to create healthy communities. So everything we're doing is on a day-to-day -day basis. You can see the effects of the Crime Center, mm -hmm. and we're doing good work. Now, we're here in 2013, January. What's exciting and new for the Crim Center this year? Well, I think one of the most exciting projects for us is the Beyond the Bricks program. Okay. That's, that's one of our, our, our new launches in, Tell us in about the center. It. So the, uh, the Beyond the Bricks program is a, uh, I think about it as a digital literacy program. So basically what we're doing is we are empowering young people, young African-American uh, boys, ages 14 and 19, uh, to utilize the media, to tell their stories and to bring attention to important issues in their lives and in their communities. So for these young men, uh, the media tells stories about who they are 
and who young black men are right mm -hmm. now, right? So what we want to do is give them the opportunity to tell their own stories. And that's what Beyond the Bricks is all about. It's a national project. Um, and so Georgia State and Atlanta were one of the sites, one of many sites. We're also in this program in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's in Morgan State, Jacksonville State, and Columbia. So we're just one of the sites that's kind of pushing this program forward. But it's a really dynamic program, and it's giving our young men voice. And that's really, really important. Wow. So huge kudos to Georgia State University. Um, doctor, quick question for you. Give us some statistics on what's going on with our African-American youth today. Uh, I don't know if I, I can give you some statistics. I can tell you uh, in terms of our schools right now, we do know that our schools are struggling. Our str okay. our, and, and we don't look at it as our children are struggling. We look at it from the perspective of our community, our schools, our business, because schooling in our, in our opinion is mm -hmm. a community issue. Mm -hmm. We don't look specifically at just schools. Mm -hmm. We look at the entire community. And our community right now is struggling to give our children a quality education. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that it recently came out that Georgia is, what, 48 right now mm -hmm. in terms of graduation okay. rates for, for our children. And if we look, if we were to look at those, uh, those numbers specifically for African American males, for instance, those numbers would be far lower. Mm -hmm. So we are struggling. We really are struggling to give our children access to a quality education. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, what we also know is that we have uh, example after example after example of people actually succeeding in educating our children. Awesome. So, you know, so like I said, we know what works mm -hmm. is do we have the will to actually implement it. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does the community view the Crim Center? Um, I think they view us as a partner. Okay. I think they see us as a partner. They see us as a resource, mm -hmm. um, some place that you can go if, uh, if you're looking for opportunities to create excellence for your mm -hmm. children in terms of school. Um, I think that they are hopefully looking at us as a leader mm -hmm. in terms of urban education, gotcha. that okay. we are actually creating some opportunities mm -hmm. uh, and creating some examples of what works in schools. Okay. In talking more specifically about the, the, the Alonzo A. Crim Center, you can... Um, how would you say, what, I'm, I'm sorry, what were some of the turning key points for the Crim Center? Yeah. Uh, well, like I said, I'm, I've only been in the position for a year. Okay. So I, I can talk um, from, from this year, and then I can talk a little bit about the history of the center. I think that um, some of the turning points for the center this year is I think we've, we've actually broadened some of the partners that we're working with. Mm -hmm. um, so like I mentioned Beyond the Bricks, that's a wonderful opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things about that program is it actually allows us to begin to partner with other universities that have similar missions to the, to the CREM Center. In the past, I think one of the big opportunities for the CREM Center is we actually give scholars and researchers, you know, people that you know, tend to not be as connected with the community, mm -hmm an entryway into the community and into schools. So we're in the business of connecting people. Um, and so you can come into the center any day uh, and just, you don't know who's going to be in it. You know, John Lewis may walk in one day and say, oh, you're saying So it's a wonderful place for people that are passionate about urban education to come and work together. What were some of the key relationship that ma relationships that mattered the most to you? Uh, well, I can talk about our past, ones, okay. right? And so I think people like, uh, Asa Hilliard mm -hmm. and his scholarship and his support of the Crim Center, mm -hmm. or Joyce King, Dr. Joyce King, who's our current Mays lecturer, our, our current Benjamin Mays chair here, mm -hmm. um, have been really, really huge supporters of, of us. Um, our, our former director, Susan Krim, and, and who's the daughter of Alonzo Krim. So, you know, we've had strong leadership, but most importantly, we've had people who believe that we can actually create excellence for urban schools mm -hmm. in the center. With all that you're doing for the Alonzo A. Krim Center, let's talk a little bit about you personally. Yeah. Tell us, outside of the Krim Center, what are you involved in and what's going on with you, Dr. Williams? Well, you know, I, I think first and foremost, I'm a dad. Hey, I'm yay. a father, right? Hey, you know, I, got, I have two little ones at home. And I say that because uh, they drive a lot of my work. Mm -hmm. You know, when I had my children, I told my wife, wow, things have really changed now. Because we were, we're both educators. My wife okay. and I are both professors in education. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, wow, the game's really changed now. Because uh, we were talking, we're passionate about public education, and we believe in public education. But when your child is actually going into a school now, and you've got to make choices about which school you're going to send them mm -hmm. to, it really does. It's a game changer for you. So my role as a father drives a lot of the work that I do in the Crim Center because I don't think about it in terms of my child. I think about it in terms of our children. Gotcha. And that's what I want to encourage other parents to do as well. Mm -hmm. It's our children. We've got to start thinking like that. Um, I'm also a science educator. Uh, you know, I, I was... Uh, 
But, you know, it's interesting. I was told very early on mm -hmm. that I probably would go to college, but I probably wouldn't graduate. And so I really wow. did not enjoy school very much. Okay. Uh, I really wasn't a great math and science student. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, I got C's and occasional D's in, in my math and science courses. But it was because I believed that what that psychology psychologist had said about me early in, in third grade, that was third grade when she made that statement, that that was, that was true. Um, and it wasn't until I got to Norfolk State University in mm -hmm. Norfolk, Virginia, mm -hmm. and I was surrounded by people who were saying, you know, you've got genius inside of you, wow. that I actually began to excel in Spoken math and science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I graduated top of my class at Norfolk State University, top science student at Norfolk State University. And so, to me, that also drives a lot of what I, what, who I am and, and why I do the work that I do, because I believe that oftentimes we are pushing kids out mm -hmm. of education. We like to talk about kids leaving, but I think sometimes we actually push them out. Um, and so I want to create opportunities for children to actually realize their genius. Wow. We have been sitting here with Dr. Brian A. Williams. We are so grateful that you took the time to hang out with the Gospel Tribune Atlanta family. Yeah. And thank you so much for your time today, sir. Thank you for having me. Dr. Candace Cavill, thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Gospel Tribune Atlanta TV. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Williams from the Alonzo A. Krim Center for Urban Educational Excellence at Georgia State University. And I'm here with the Gospel Tribune Atlanta. If you'd like to learn more about excellence in urban education, tune in to GTA TV. There is something about God's presence. Help me set the atmosphere. Let's send the message to glory. Saying, Lord, you're welcome here. If he comes, there will be joy, peace, and good cheer. For he promised he'd wipe away every tear. 